What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back for another movie corner movie review, and this is a movie that came out in. Let me see what they say the date was. 1997 and it is called my best friend's wedding oh let me turn the light on there you go y'all can see me my thing is if you see me before you know that i said like out of the white actresses and i have to specify that because i put my stuff in categories like i don't have an overall like favorite actress ever or actor ever i break them up like you know white black and all that stuff and then that's just how I do it. That's just how I do it, okay? But in the white category, when it comes to the women, one of my favorites are Sandra Bullock, um, Julia Roberts, Angelina Jolie, of course. You know, because I, I was in love with... I had a crush on Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie can't do no wrong in my eyes. I'm just saying. She's just one of those. And Julia Roberts is one of those, too, okay? But at the same time, like, one of my favorite movies from Julia Roberts and one of my favorite movies ever is still Magnolias, all right? But, um, for some reason, I already knew about my best friend's wedding, right? But I just never really saw it in full. Not, my, mind you, my best friend's wedding came out when I was 10 years old, 1997, okay? So, yeah, I wasn't checking for it back then, you know what I'm saying? And then it's one of those, I guess you could say cult classics or classics that people talk about or whatever. Just like when it comes to her um, Pretty Woman, okay? Everybody knows Pretty Woman. Everybody's seen Pretty Woman or whatever. But I've seen, I have a habit of seeing movies like in clips or in sections and not the whole thing together and this was probably like my first time that i can remember actually watching the whole movie together and as i was watching it i was like okay i think i did see this before because i remember some of the stuff unless i had already saw some of the clips but at my grown age and i'm watching this and i'm just like i don't like <laughs> This whole scenario, this whole premise of this movie, the plot and everything, what it was about, it really infuriated me because I don't like people who do this. And you know, you guys know that this happens sometimes. It's one of those situations like Joni Mitchell never lies. Like, you don't miss what you got till it's gone. Joni Mitchell ain't lie. Jen Jackson had to tell y'all too. You know, you don't miss what you got until it's gone. And that's literally what it is with this whole situation with this movie. Um, You got this lady played by my girl Julia Roberts. You know, I really feel like Julia Roberts got a little black in her. I know she got a little association with the uh, King family, Martin Luther King and them. But, you know, I just feel like she probably got one hundredth of a black in her. So, you know, she's an honorary sister for me. But anyway, you know, that's neither here nor there. My thing is, she's playing this critic, right? She's a full critic. You know, she's an author. She's giving you very much Anthony Bourdain. May he rest in peace. Uh, he's She's giving... I would say Gordon Ramsay, but see, we ain't see her cook. We just say that she a fool critic. You know what I'm saying? I feel like fool critics or people who are critics are the ones that cannot do the actual thing that they're critiquing. So, therefore, they failed at actually cooking or acting or whatever. So, let's be a critic because since I can't do that, I'm going to critique it. That's what I feel like is going on. But, you know, y'all can feel different. But she has a friend named George, and he's a gay guy. Um, and I don't know how I feel about his character, especially given the fact that it's in 1997. Um, I would say this was probably one of those times where, I don't know if it was wildly, it, it's times are different back then than they are now. Now we'll see a gay person in a movie and they'll have a prominent role or whatever. But even back then you could see that. You know, the gay person, the gay man that was in a movie is not necessarily in a relationship. They are the straight woman's best friend or, you know, uh, clothing things or a stylist or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, almost like an accessory coming to save the day because that's kind of what he did a little bit. But, you know, I feel like he was her conscience and the fact that. You know, she had already had on her shoulder with this whole situation with her 
her best friend because she's in love with her best friend. Her best friend, what is his name? Eric? Let me see. Michael. I don't know where I got Eric from, but his name is Michael. Her name is Julianne. They call her Jules. Um, and then she got the editor who became one of her good, good friends, or I should say her good Judy, um, George, right? Now, George is the one that's basically trying to get that devil off her shoulders. She got the devil talking to her throughout this whole movie, trying to plot and scheme and break up her uh, best friend's relationship. And you got George over here like, girl, just let it go, okay? You At the end of the day, if you do this, how would you look to him? You're not going to look well, and especially if that's the whole thing. Like, you be in your feelings, and sometimes people just run off of emotions. People run off of emotions, and they don't think, you know. And it's like, even if I plot to break up this relationship, and then I get this person, how is that going to make me feel knowing that, technically speaking, I really am second choice? Because... He or she did not choose me, and I had to break up a relationship just to get with them. And then when they find out the way and how things happen, how you think that's going to make them feel? You should feel like shit. I'm just saying. Like, I just would be able to feel great about myself knowing that I did something like that. Fooling somebody into loving you. Fooling somebody into being with you. You know what I'm saying? Because you missed your opportunity because you literally messed it up. So, basically, what we got from Julianne, you know, her and Michael used to be together, right? Um, I guess they met in college or something like that. They hooked up for a minute, and I believe she was the one that broke off the relationship because she's not that mushy in love type, and it was feeling like almost as if they were the two, two of the same people, you know what I'm saying? And at this point, by the time you see the movie progress, you really realize it was Julianne who messed it up. And um, if Michael said that, you know, yeah, we, we, we couldn't be together like that, I feel like he was probably just saying that because, you know, Julianne had broke up with him and, you know, she just wasn't that type to be all in a lovey-dovey relationship and be mushy and, you know, all of that type of stuff. You know, some people are made for relationships, some people are not. Some people like PDA, some people don't. Some people like this, some people don't. You know what I'm saying? And that's just okay. But... She said they had this one moment in Tuscany or wherever they was at. I don't know. Um, and they was like, you know, if by the age 28 we're not married, why don't we just get back together with each other? We probably get married to do whatever. I said, I hate when I hear people make packs like that. And the only time in real life that I've ever hear that I hear something like that is on the movies. If y'all ever know somebody to make a pack like that, <laughs> I couldn't be friends with nobody like that. Like, no, we're not gonna make packs, okay? You, we, we, we not doing that. All right. By the time I'm twenty something, I said, wow. The fact that, first of all, back in the day, I'm realizing like these twenty year olds and these twenty somethings, almost thirties or whatever, and even early thirties, they look old as hell. All right, not saying that them, but them, I just don't, re I just don't feel like, and I don't feel like looking it up to see how old they was back then, but they just really wasn't giving me 28, okay? They wasn't giving me 28, they was giving me a good 35. <laughs> they was giving me a good 35, okay? But, um, you know, they was like, yeah, we'll get married, we'll do that, doom, bang, bang, boogie, okay? Mind you, she's about to turn 28 in like three weeks, okay? Uh, a few days or whatever. He already 28. He winds up leaving a phone call message on her phone or whatever, basically saying that, you know, uh, call him back. She called him back. Come to find out, he done met somebody, and they haven't spoken in a minute, but he done met somebody that down here in Chicago, and he about to get married on Sunday, that same week. Mind you, it is Wednesday night when she calls him. I said, wait a minute now, if I'm your best friend, Okay, because that's the title of the episode, the, the movie, right? My Best Friend's Wedding, right? And you keep on giving us all this background about how y'all was this close, that close, and all that stuff. How come you just not telling me that you getting married? How come you just not telling me that you was in a relationship and then you get married? Like, what? Like, I just missed the whole chapter. I Don't do that to me, okay? Please. People in my life, if you're going to get married to somebody and we close like this, I want to be there through the whole process because I got to let you know, like, listen... 
Get them. Get them. Get them. Uh huh. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Because I got to get to know the person. I don't want to get to know the person afterwards, okay? Because I don't want you to make a mistake. You know, I want to put my pen out there, whatever, just in case I need to. You can take it if you want to, but at least I feel good enough to know that, yeah, I said something prior. You know what I'm saying? But don't just bring something up on me like that, right? So, of course, she hears this news and all of a sudden it's like go time. Let me do whatever it is that I got to do to, you know, go ahead and get this man back. Now, see, what made me mad about this whole situation is... Just because you hear now that he's getting married to somebody, he's found somebody to love and all this stuff, and he didn't choose you. What was going on in the years that y'all broke up, went y'all separate ways, that you just come to this realization that you want him that way, that bad, that you don't want nobody else to have him? And it was just really sucky. Like, you wait until he get into a whole ass relationship. You wait until he get into about to be married and you want to try to break it up like that's that's not right that's not right and that just makes you a villain that just makes you a terrible person that makes you evil in my eyes and i just wouldn't want to be friends or trust you after that you know and george keep trying to tell her girl stop it chill out okay so when it comes down to the relationship, and see, that's the thing. Some of the, I have to put in context that this is the 90s and, you know, everything wasn't so politically correct <laughs> back then, early on, like they are now, because I have an issue. Just like I had an issue with the fact, y'all want to know a movie that was so freaking problematic, but it's such a classic amongst people and everybody love or know about, Clueless. It ain't got nothing to do with the fact for me that, you know, you got the teenagers doing this and you got the teenagers doing that because that's what happened in high school. You know, we sneak off, we have parties, we, 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 we experiment, you know, we do alcohol sometimes. That's just what happened. You know, we fucking up in high school too. I'm just saying, I wasn't, but I know people who was, okay? Some of y'all probably was too. But here's the thing. The part of Clueless that got me... Was the fact that Cher was young. She was still in high school and she winds up getting into a relationship with her grown stepbrother. What? <laughs> what? That is not right. I don't care if he was 20. I don't care if he was 19. I don't care if he was 25, 24, 23. Baby, it's nasty because, first of all, that's your stepbrother. I don't care how long he been your stepbrother. That's your stepbrother, and he older than you, and he out of school, and he was a bum. Baby, what? No. But, see, the, why I brought that up is because Michael on here is supposed to be 28 years old, and then the woman that he getting married to because her daddy is the owner of the White Sox out here. Baby, oh, I had got some flashback when they was like, she's down there at Comiskey Park. I said Kaminsky Park. Baby, that's what the White Sox Stadium used to be called out here, okay? It's U.S. Cellular Field now, I think. But, baby, is it really U.S. Cellular Field? Let me see. Because, you know, they changed the name to the uh, Sears Tower to the Willis Tower. And if you true to Chicago, born and raised, and you a true Chicagoan, you already know we're still the Sears Towers, okay? What is the White Sox? Yeah, there it is. That, what? When did they change it to that? Girl, I'm so behind. It went from Kaminsky Park to U.S. Cellular Park to now it's guaranteed rate field. Who be coming up with the names for this? I understand that the companies be um buying this stuff. It's just like the way they renamed the Staples Center. Okay, it's, 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 it's what... <laughs> guarantee rate like what girl it's the white Sox stadium that's just what it is okay she was out there you know the, the daddy is the owner so you know they come for money but dude is 28 years old and she is 20 now i'm all here for because y'all didn't heard me if you've been watching me y'all know i'm attracted to older people to a certain degree like i don't really want to date somebody that's underneath me um, and if I do date somebody that's younger than me, I really feel like the lowest I can go is like two years younger. 
But now that I'm 30 something, I can date somebody that's in their 30s. Like if you're in your 20s, girl, no. Okay, you can be low 30s and you can be high 30s. I just cannot do somebody that's in their 20s because no. All right, we're just not about to do that. You're not going to make me feel like the old bitch in the relationship. No. I want to feel like the young one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is what it is. But I just got attraction to people that's older because I just feel like in my mind, the ones that I be attracted to be mature. You know, because I'm mature and I just feel like I don't relate to somebody that's my age or younger. Or that's younger than me, I should say mostly. And so, to have such an age gap like that when it's low... And see, that's the thing. It is okay, in my opinion, to be with somebody. Let's say you're 24 years old and your partner is probably 29. That's fine, okay? Even 25 to 30 or whatever. That's somewhat okay with me, okay? Somewhat, somewhat. Because you, you halfway there. You not low 20s, you know what I'm saying? But you halfway there. But to be... Let's say 24, 17, 25, 17, 18. Uh-uh. If you 20 something and you dating somebody in your teens, they teens, hell no. And if you almost you closer to 30 and you dating somebody that literally just turned 20, no. What do y'all have in, uh, in common? You have an established career or you trying to get your career going and all that stuff and you up here finna get married to somebody that's 20 years old, which means to tell me, let's say you actually dated this person to get to know this person and y'all been in a relationship, let's give you two years. Okay, let's give you two years. So that means you probably was with her when you, she was 18 years old and you were still 26. You was a grown ass person. A grown ass per I don't get it. What do you have in common? First of all, just because the bitch got money, she couldn't drive. Now, listen, I'm the last one to talk about somebody driving because, listen, I ain't got my car yet. But see, Ashley knows how to drive. Now, I know the rules of the road, okay? Don't get it twisted. Parallel park, I can parallel park you down, all right? They'll do that. But this girl was out here speeding on Lakeshore Drive in Michigan Avenue. I said, uh-uh, ma'am. -uh, where is the police to give her a ticket? It was just a lot that was going on, and it was playing by Cameron Diaz. I said, look at Cameron. Okay, I forgot she was up in here, right? And I said, ain't no way in hell, Cameron, you are playing 20 years old. <laughs> and she was a ditz. She was a ditz, like, I don't know, like, not necessarily, I wouldn't say ditzy. I would just say she, I guess you would say submissive. If you want to put it like that, because she was going to be, she, she was okay to do whatever it is that he wanted her to do. And see, when I think of people who date young people like that, that age gap, when it's come from that end of the spectrum, when you're like from your teens to your early twenties and you're dating somebody that's like 30 plus or whatever, or almost 30, it just feels like a control type of situation and a manipulation type of situation because first of all you don't have no real life experience you coming from your parents house and you going to somebody else's house you haven't really lived and then you do i guess you looking at your parents relationship because in this type of situation the parents got money the parents are bougie and she she come from that type of world i mean she got her little cashmere sweaters and all of that stuff i'm like girl put on a pair of jeans you know she was always in a little uh pastel color dress and all that stuff and she was giving me very much, I don't know, is it Steph or White type of tease, 1950 tease? I don't know. Like, that's a missile type. Like, I would do whatever it is that I want for my man because that's how I was taught. That's how I was brought up. And sure enough, at one point, he has a job where I guess he travels. I don't know what type of, is it PR for, you know, other sports team all over? He's just traveling a lot you know, with the sports teams and stuff like that. Somewhat, it sounded like he was a recruiter or something like that. But she was willing and had decided because he was going to be gone all the time to just drop out of school, not finish her senior year in college. Mind you, she's in college. I am not going to be with somebody that's still in school if they are not in grad school or they going back for a second master degree or whatever. Girl, please, I cannot do it. And you up here trying to get your bachelor's and you getting your bachelor's at the age that you got it, meaning that you just came out of high school and you just went back up into college. Girl, anybody got time for that? Mm -mm, mm -mm. We don't need to be having no type of association like that. We, me and you cannot relate to anything right about now. I'm just going to say. The only thing that we probably can uh, talk about is pop culture. 
Okay, and nine out of ten, you don't even know the pop culture that I know, you know, because I know all of it. You just know some of it from right now. I know it from then, there, and now. You know what I'm saying? Probably know something of the future. We can't, have, we don't have nothing in common. Okay, that I just don't get it. And she was going to just drop out just to be and travel on the road with him. Okay, he, she, she, she wanted to do what Jay Z doing with Beyonce. Jay-Z ain't worked a day in his life doing this tour besides being her cheerleader. And that's literally what she was going to do. I mean, granted, he didn't put in the work. But y'all get what I'm saying. I just said, you know what? You want to be a housewife? I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, like, really. And then to know that your spouse or your soon-to-be spouse has this best friend of the opposite sex. And they talk so much about them that... You know about them. The family know, your family know about them. And y'all acting like y'all okay with it. You know, that's why they say sometimes men and women cannot be friends or at least best friends like that. Because 9 out of 10, somebody going to have feelings. Now, at first, I had I was of the mind of thinking like, no, anybody can be friends with each other. You know, it's boundaries and all that stuff. Just because opposite sex are friends with each other doesn't mean that they want anything. But then you got a movie like this where the best friends actually had something going on. And then they realized that it didn't work. And then the other one want to come back once the one get into a relationship and try to break it up. And, and, and you talking so much about it. How is it that they knew so much about her, the best friend family? Uh, uh, the, her family knew so much about her, but yet the best friend didn't know nothing about your wife to be. What is wrong with that picture? You telling them you talking all this much, the, her mama know about you, the daddy know about you. They all happy to see you because, listen, you talk so much about her. And I'm saying, like, damn, did Michael talk about Kimmy like that? Because he showed her, didn't tell, um, Julie, Julianne what's, what, what was going on. I was like, what? And then Kimmy, Kimmy felt so comfortable enough in trying to please this man and make sure everything cool with him and her to the point where the first time she meets this woman ever in life, she makes her her maid of honor. I know she said the original person had to drop out. <laughs> Because she got hurt or something. And I'm sitting here like, why couldn't you make somebody else? She was like, the other people that's in the wedding or whatever, they're like 40-something. I said, I don't care. Like, I'm never going to make somebody that I don't know my maid of honor or put them in a high position in whatever event I'm throwing. No, I said, ma'am, you got a lot of growing up to do. Because at this point, it really don't seem like you're using your mind because you don't have one at this point. Um, meanwhile, she just... Julian, aka Jules, girl, Miss Jules was a mess. Okay, Miss Jules was flirting. Miss Jules was using everything that that girl couldn't stand about Michael against her. Took her to a court, uh, what is it, a karaoke bar. Couldn't stand the karaoke or whatever. Put that girl on the spot. Thought that she was gonna embarrass her. Kind of find out at first, some people was like, "Girl, you suck." Sit down. I said, now, hold on. They was like, boo, sit down. Pass the mic. Oh, my God. you suck. I said, now, wait a minute. This is a karaoke bar, and karaoke don't mean that you're supposed to know how to sing sing. You know what I'm saying? It's for fun and for play play. You know, we, we are no judgment zone. But at this point, they went from doing that to cheering for her. And I said, what are y'all cheering for? <laughs> And it was the way that Michael was looking at her like he was so in love. And I said, oof, this is so problematic for me. But everything that she did to try to get that girl to break up that relationship, like she literally, her whole mission was to break this relationship up by the time uh, she got they got married. To the point where she even got so upset, um, she had to call her friend George, he wound up coming down there and, and, and faking like, you know, he was her uh, fiance. Now, ma'am, how you going to make this gay man? Mind you, she didn't spoke to him about George because Michael said, 
you know, I'm surprised that y'all engaged because every time you spoke about George, yeah, I thought he was a gay man. And he was like, yeah, I just pretend to be gay. I said, now see, Michael, if you were smart, you would have been able to pick up on that like, ain't no straight man finna uh, pretend like they're a gay man for kicks and giggles just to get women. No, that just doesn't make sense. And if y'all do that, I've never heard of it, okay? I'ma just put it like that. And then you, all of a sudden, you saying the story of how y'all met and you looking at the people up in the... Uh, he was looking at the people up in the uh, church and he was talking about the clothes and all that stuff. And I said, y'all not picking up on the cues that this can't be her fiance, that this literally is a gay man. Baby, it was bothering me. And then when they went to the restaurant and they started singing Diane uh, Dion Warwick's um, Say a Little Prayer for You. I mean, that was, that was cute. That was cute. I ain't even gonna lie. I said it was a little gentrified, but it was cute. The whole restaurant came together. I don't ever want to be in no place where somebody started doing that. Spontaneously start singing, then everybody want to start singing. No, ma'am, don't embarrass me like that. Because I get secondhand embarrassment for y'all. Because I literally just came here to eat a little something, drink a little something, and to go home. I ain't come here for all of that. I know some people might be like, Ashley, that's fun or whatever. Girl, it ain't fun for you. A bitch like me got social anxiety. I don't want to be there in the first place. I'm being forced to be there because they like, girl, you got to get out the house. Come on, let's go to it. No, no, don't do that. Sit your ass there. Have your little conversation. Let's eat and let's get the hell up out of here, okay? That's just how it is for me. But, you know, you got all of that going on. She wanted to make up a letter and make it so that he could have a, um, uh, uh, her daddy can give her him a position to stay in his company so that he won't be going from state to state and uh, traveling so much and giving him an office job which he doesn't want and so he she tries to convince Kimmy to do that and they get into an argument at that point and then they make up and it was just so weird but then you in you are in with the family and you literally still trying to be a devil by trying to break them up. You go to the daddy's office and you making up a fake email trying to make it seem. I said, oh my God, first of all, when she was typing up that email, trying to make it seem like, you know, the daddy wanted him to come and stay and uh, work for a few months at the job and all that stuff that she was supposed to save. But it wound up sending us something like that or whatever because he winds up getting it and thinking that Kimmy was the one that wrote it and all that stuff or whatever it was. She was playing around with the ring and got the ring stuck. Let me tell you something. Did y'all? I don't know what Microsoft that was, okay? I said, my goodness. Do you know I have an old, old laptop like that? My auntie had it. And I remember she had gave it to us because she was cleaning out some stuff. And it literally, y'all saw how it was thick on there and shit looked like a brick. <laughs> You see how thin this is as a MacBook? <laughs> Girl, the motherfuckers was thick like this, okay? They was thick like this back in the day. I said, wow, we have come a long way. <laughs> we have come a long way. And I was getting mad. Girl, my blood pressure was boiling. I was like, oh my God, why is the connection so slow? Why is the pixelation in this email and on this computer looking like this? I said, girl, it's 1997. Girl, they just they just trying to get it together, okay? They probably just not getting wireless. It don't even look like it. It look like they still got dial up, okay? You got to calm it down. I said, whew, because it was bothering me. Because one thing that we can't stand is a slow ass internet, okay? And I just like, hmm. But you got all of that going on. And I was just like, girl, you are a mess. I just, moral of the story, she realized that this man don't want her. At one point, the wedding had got called off or whatever because he thought that she was saying something, um, sent the email and was trying to, you know, force him to stay or whatever it was to kind of find out it was Jules that did it and she was just trying to do whatever she could to break them up and she almost succeeded but she could tell that that man didn't want her like that that man didn't want her like that and, and my thing is when they broke up for a second or they called off the wedding the night before um he ain't even bother to go f her <laughs> I said, damn, Jules, he ain't even want to go and have some little pity sex with you or whatever. Like, 
nothing okay and you couldn't get it through your i just would not want to be put in that position i would not want to be put in that position where i feel as though i have to break up somebody's relationship because i'm jealous because i missed my opportunity and the reason why i missed my opportunity is because i turned it down because i was thinking about myself and not trying to be in this relationship and then thinking that oh he, this person is still going to be there whenever I'm ready. You know, they're going to just, I was in that Delulu stage where, oh, they're going to wait for me, even though they didn't say that we was going to wait for each other, you know, and now that they've moved on and they're living life and they find love, I want them to be just as miserable as me by being with me. Cause that's what it's going to be. You're going to have that guilty conscience. And if you don't have a guilty conscience for messing up somebody's stuff, you are just an evil person in my opinion. Okay, I, I just I just cannot get with it. I said, Julia, you needed your ass whooped. All right, for real, for real. And then, you know, was just kicking it with the girl, going to the brunch and all that stuff. And you it you you very much involved in her family now. You know what I'm saying? You practically family and you still there and and, and first of all, all of that was fake. Because I don't know nobody who will accept people right off the bat. <laughs> and not it is their age. They don't accept people right off the bat. But they accepted her right off the bat. All right. And that's because he talked so much about her ass. I was just like, you know what? That girl didn't do nothing to you. That girl was kind of naive. Yes, she was. But you was, just, you was just evil. And I wouldn't even want to be with a person who would have somebody like that in their life. Honestly, that would turn me off so bad. That would turn me off so bad. Because at one point, at the very end of the, ep uh, at the episode, of uh, the movie, before the wedding, um, he was supposed to be going over there to, uh, 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 what is it, call the wedding off or whatever, tell the people. First of all, now you just said that the wedding is not finna happen, but you show up to the pre-wedding brunch, and you out there kicking it with the family before telling them, Oh, we're going to eat this food before I drop the bomb on you and tell you that, listen, I ain't getting married to this girl, okay? I said, what? I mean, honestly, I kind of get it. Y'all ain't spent the money. Ain't no need for it to go to waste. Let me get a, give me a doggy bag. <laughs> give me a couple of plates. But you got that right. And then Jules take it upon herself to want to just go ahead and to tell him that she's in love with him, she wants him to choose her, I am not finna belittle myself to say, choose me, choose me. You're begging for someone to choose you. Wow, and they're already chosen somebody else. You okay with being second choice, third choice? Ashley will never be, okay? I have to be first choice or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm never begging anybody. That's probably why I'm in the situation I'm in now. Nowhere. So low, duh low. Because I'm not begging and I'm not finna lower my standards or whatever just so I can say that I have somebody to settle with somebody. No. Because the time I get into a relationship, that's just gonna be it. Okay? I am old enough to not be out here still trying to rip and run and going from relationship to relationship to relationship. I don't want to be almost 50 still trying to figure it out. I want to be almost 50 and settled, okay? Settled. I want to have my house. I want to have my household, okay? I want to have my woman, you know what I'm saying? We want to be in our dog, okay? That's what we're going to have. Mm-hmm. In a two-car garage, okay? That's what it is. That's what it is. You know, I'm not going to be out here trying to beg something. Choose me. I said what? And they're going to kiss that man? After you just talked to that girl and basically told her, uh, he don't want you and you just need to move on. And now she done came over there trying to talk to the man and you got your lips all up on her, him. And now they running and the family so damn delusional. They don't see them running through, calling after each other. Girl, she done ran and saw her at Kaminsky Park, a.k.a. the White Sox Stadium. And that whole scene, I said, you know what? Mind you... She had egg on her face, and I'm talking about Jules, because she found Michael up in Union Station, and she, she, she was like, why would you come here? And he was like, because I figured she would come here because of the fact that I proposed to her here. You know what I'm saying? It's sentimental reason. It's sentimental. You know what I'm saying? And so, 
the fact that this man said that I guess she realized that yeah it's over in the love department between me and him he doesn't want me he wants her so she found out another place that she could be which was at the Kaminsky Park in the bathroom I said now how I know they said they saw her come up in there but how do you know which floor to go to excuse me which floor to go to in the bathroom and why are we playing around in the bathroom we just gonna sit up in the bathroom and do what that stank that is a lot of body odor you know what i'm saying and we just sitting up in the stalls at a baseball stadium with a lot of people in their funks and body oh uh, no ma'am first of all that was a lot that was a lot but then when she found her she cussed her ass out and everybody it was the crowd it was like girl what and especially was like and you tried to kiss him on my wedding day girl what baby them black folks they was ready to whoop some ass and that white lady with the curly hair she was like uh-uh uh-uh i said ma'am don't pull out your razor just yet but then it flipped the turn when she said yeah girl I tried to do this, but I realized he loved you and all that stuff, and you need to go over there and marry our man. I said, excuse me, marry our man? <laughs> and she forgave her or whatever because she still was her bride, uh, her maid of honor. She was still at the wedding. She gave a toast. And I'm just like, no. No, it just wouldn't happen. That bitch would have been back on the next plane that she paid for to wherever she came from because she would not be my maid of honor. She would not be any participant in my wedding. And I, I'm, I, I hate to give somebody an ultimatum like this and say, you know, it's either me or them. Baby, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just tell you right here, right now. Because your friend put me through this mess. Y'all a little bit too close for my comfort. Because I know that would have made me uncomfortable. It's not anything about insecurity or whatever. It's just the way that you're a little bit too close. And it just feels like something is going on. And if I feel like something is going on, 9 out of 10, I've never been wrong when I have ever had that feeling. So that's when I know I'm going to have to take a step back and y'all going to have to go ahead and knock that out and leave me out of the picture and I'm going to have to move on because we're not about to play these games. Because what if they get married and then he fuck around and cheat on her while he out there on the road with the best friend? Because I feel like that's what my best friend's wedding too was going to be like. They get a divorce and they fuck around and get married and try to get married and she still don't get y'all. That's what it's going to be like. She broke up their wedding eventually because he cheated on the girl with her and then still don't end up in a relationship with her but gets with somebody else. That what would uh my best friend's wedding part two would have been. I feel like that's what it would have been. Because you, you don't win when you're playing dirty, okay? And she was playing dirty this whole time this whole time now george came in to say the day and let her give her a little dance and stuff all that stuff when they was talking on the phone why was he talking all on the phone so seductive like to her and i was like so are y'all about to tell us that this gay man is really not a gay man but he's bisexual and they're about to bang bang boogie it out like on the box springs like what's going on because it was given very much that and i said i thought he was gay why is he trying to seduce her? I know he was trying to lift her spirits or whatever, but it just felt a little weird, you know. But in reality, I will say the movie was cute. I actually did like it. It just pissed me off because I don't like people playing people like that. But it was a nice little movie. Um, I could watch it again. I could watch it again. You know, like if ain't nothing else on, I could watch it again. Because, like, you know, I love me some Julia Roberts or whatever. I can't believe it took me all these years to go ahead and watch this movie. And it really wasn't a bad movie. I love 90s movies and stuff like that. Because half of them didn't make no sense, but they were still good. Okay? Even our, I guess you want to say our hood or our urban movies, you know, they were trash half the time. But they were still good. Our ratchet movies. Just like the ratchet shows and the ratchet music that we had back in the day. They was a mess, but they were still good. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah. How would y'all feel if y'all was in this type of situation? Are you okay? And put it down in the comments. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Do you, have you ever been in a situation where your spouse was too close to somebody? Or, you know, because I just feel like if y'all best friends, how come you couldn't, he couldn't pick up on the fact that this girl wanted him? 
because she was just giving clues the whole time and she wasn't even trying to hide it. And then when he found out about the fake engagement, he was jealous of her. So I was like, do y'all really want each other? And it just felt like one of those situations where we love each other, but we know we're not good for each other and we're better off friends. And that sometimes is the best bet because sometimes it's better if you're friends with somebody to get together because you actually know each other. But also, if you've been friends for a long time, you take the risk of it not really working out and you realizing that, oh, we should have been better off as friends and we never should have crossed this line. And um, it can mess up the friendship and things will just never be the same. Now, honestly, after all, if something like this would have happened to me, and I was in the situation and I was the one getting married and my best friend was the one that was trying to get with me and break up my relationship and they finally declared they love for me and then I still got married to the person that I wanted to get married to. I our friendship would never be the same. Our friendship would never be the same. I, I just wouldn't be able to be around you like that. And I'm pretty sure my spouse wouldn't feel comfortable with you around you either like that. Put it down in the comments how you feel about that scenario. Do you feel like have you ever been in something like this? Or do you know something like this? Or do you feel like what well, some people feel that men and women cannot be friends? And see, that is a tricky thing, especially when it comes to same-sex relationships as well. Because 9 out of 10, our good Judy is the person of the same sex. And I know a lot of people who have their friends in their friend circle, in my community. You know, so I had... Y'all put it down in the comments. Y'all tell me how you feel. And I will see you guys later. Hopefully the next video will be on time. But the next video will be Obsessed. Okay. Somebody said, Ashley, since it's on Netflix now, you need to do Obsessed because I want to see your opinion of it. And if y'all don't know what Obsessed is, that's the one with Beyonce. And you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it because I'm going to be up in Houston next this Sunday. So before I leave, I'm going to have it put up. Because I do guess. <laughs> I'm going to try not to be... Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop laying. Because I said I was trying not to be shady on it. But I got to be truthful. But anyway, y'all have a good night. And I will see you guys later. Peace.